introduce Axel Roots from the Catholic Clinic of Koblenz, Germany, who is going to give us a talk also on total hypertrophy, but from another country, Germany. Le titre Prothèse de hanche pour les the title is Hip Prosthesis for Patients with Post Polio Syndrome and Often Misunderstood Problem. Thank you. Dear Mr. Chairman, dear President, dear David, dear Roger, uh, I want to say thank you for this invitation. Uh, I'm sorry, but my French is very bad. I, I was asked uh, to present um, our techniques in uh, Koblenz. I'm the leader of the polio department of the conservative orthopedic uh, clinics. We have four departments, the endoprothetics, the uh, spine surgery, also the atroscopic spot surgery, and mine, the conservative clinics, and I'm the leader for the polio patients. And so we make our uh, multi-professional team together. Also, the surgery for the often seen hip problem in polio patients. And so I was asked to um, present this in this afternoon. So um, I think uh, this is the, the green one. The green one. It's, it's very easy. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the consequence in this year is also like in the years before. In Germany, there are still alive 60,000 polio patients. We mean between the age of 16 and 86. There's no reason to die any time further in, uh, in affecting from polio. We have the problems uh, by sitting, breathing, sleeping, by standing and by walking, also in, in some cases of running. And this includes pain, a loss of muscular function, and often the consequence of downfall of abuse, a normal abuse of joints, like you see in the slide here. Um, this problem is not new for polio patients. Um, we remarked it in also 2005, uh, uh, but uh, we have the possibility to make an S1 experience guidelines on the National Orthopedic uh, Congress in Bremen 2017, 2010, and give some explanation what we are doing in uh, examination before we make hip uh, surgery and what we are doing after this um, in rehabilitation, for example. And so we uh, developed an, a, a case follow in this um, principles uh, what we have seen since, I think, 3,000 years before Christ here in this Egypt rune and also was uh, performed by Professor Stenström von Karolinska Universität in Lund in Sweden with the orthopedic surgery and post-polio syndrome to the risk of luxation operation with total hip atropastic demands, careful, be pre-operative planning, often including uh, also EMG, electromyographic and MRI and CT we have to plan post-operative rehabilitation in mandatory. So the problem is well known, and you know, also my colleague told us, it's, it's polio, it's a problem. And uh, you, you send out the message, often the not so affected leg is, is the more affected by the hip at, uh, um, atros, at the, the atrosis, but in this case, you see the problem is on the more affected leg, and what we have to think about before we make surgery is what we do in rehabilitation when we have a leg which is affected and the weight bearing is not possible after a uh, surgery, for example. So we have to plan it before, and for this, we have these tools, um, like my friend Franz Nollet uh, showed us in 2011 uh, and 2014 in Amsterdam. Uh, the methods of measuring the muscle strains is necessary before doing any surgery so that we know uh, how weak is this leg, like, for example? What will it perform after the surgery? Is it necessary to make a surgery or is this a problem in the rehabilitation after this? The uh, conclusion and the recommendation was for um, Franz Nollet and his team that we have to look 
with non-instrumented methods, of course, by hands um, in the examination, but also to make an objective tool for fixed dynamometers, for, ex for experience, for um, isokinetic measurement. So this we do before, and we find, like you see here, an um, isokinetic curves, and we can define what is happening with the affected leg when there is a hip surgery, and uh, we can see what's uh, going on, for example, in the future with the extension muscles of the knee or of the hip. And uh, if we do there a uh, surgical approach, what will happen with the polio muscles? Uh, will they become worse or will they not affected by this? So we show first, we show at first at the performance in the muscle measurement that uh, we see that he is more affected than that we think in the uh, daily living events. And after this, when we have this, we met, of course, um, some X-rays. And uh, here you find some cases which are the pitfalls in the polio hip replacement. Look on the left side, the first slide on beyond, there is a uh, Kuroki inlay, for example. On the right side, a metal-metal combination, of course, not being used because of metallic in the blood. In, in the future, but on the right side, um, it's all okay. On the left side, it's a losing zone, and um, also of the Kuroko inlay, there gets a luxation. It's a, it's a case um, we have seen twice time as a luxation, and after this, uh, we make a new um, we make a new hip. Uh, in this case for the um, hip components and now when we look after seven years what we have done to the patient he's still mobile and uh, he can walk with his um, prothesis and the hip prothesis. What we have to think about is um, what muscles are affected. He present us the Hüter ventral approach for, for example if we see in the MRI which uh, muscles are affected? Where is the tissue in the in the sequence for the for the tissue? We see that there is an atrophic uh, fat muscular and the pelvic trochanteric muscles are, doesn't work anymore, and this is a high risk for luxation. But if there is, for um, example, more a problem in the front of the hip in the hip extension and knee extension muscle, we must decide um, to choose an other approach for the hip replacement. And this has been done before doing any surgery uh, to prevent um, people from wrong um, outcome. And so we have many possibilities. Also, the good old approaches from the lateral side can be good for this patient if these muscles are not affected. This approach might be better, but we have to know it before we are going to surgery. And this is also a discussion in just in this time, always uh, the, the minimal invasive uh, surgical hip approaches are used, but I mean, it must be not the best one. The minimal invasive surgery for the affected post polio muscles is often the best. If you disconnect it from your from the bone, he will not uh, be used uh, anymore after such a surgery, and uh, with no touch techniques for this muscle, it must be much better for rehabilitation after this. And what we have to do is uh, to implant the parts of the hip so that we are safe against luxation because of the weakness of the pelvic trochanter muscles for uh, this uh, endoprothetic help with hip replacement. Look here, um, MRI, MRT is a hip joint before and hip replacement to be made. And this is um, the, the first message we have for our patients. If it's done, we are sure that the approach might be the right one and see the very complex cases you have seen also in the cases from Dr. Fabienne. Um, it's
been done in former times with an uh, X-ray planning. So it might be necessary to make an uh, osteotomia, to do an alloatroplastic by implantation of the hip endoprothesis. And this is the number of patients we have seen since 2016. I'm now not now the leader of the polio department since 2008 and uh, we are looking for the last five years and we have registered um, data from 22 of uh, 28 registered uh, polio patients. Um, the total number were 27 patients in these seven years. We have been surgeon at hip replacement and we can talk with 2020 of them and these are the results we, we formed and um, if you know the Harris hip score you must modify him uh, because Harris hip score also have some exercises inside polio patients can't do and uh, so um, he's been a uh, decreased uh, Harris hip score only for uh, movement for pain and some daily using and um, when we are looking for the results you find the red line here and uh, also all what is uh, on beyond the and over the red line is a difference. So we found from our patients that uh, there is excellent results only in one case. There are good results in the Harris hip score with the PPS um, modified in class two with nine patients, and the average result, which is okay, it's by five patients. But uh, what we have to say is. Um, seven patients of the 2020 patients had a bad result. Yes, and this must be for thinking about. And um, what is the problem? Yes, the Harris hip score, for example, is measuring the uh, distance of walking and what we don't know, what will happen with the patient who have a post-polio syndrome. He is happy with his endoprothesis, but he can't walk anymore. What's the reason? Is this a post-polio syndrome? Is this a loss of neuromuscular conjunctions? Or is this uh, the result of the hip surgery? Um, there is a good difference influenced but by the post-polio syndrome by in our patients, what we ask for. But it might be a good result if a post-polio patient who uh, can transfer from, from his chair in the bathroom or in the kitchen and in the inside walker is um, not and have not more uh, walking distance, but he is without pain uh, at morning waking up without pain and, and can weight bearing on his affected leg without pain and, and move it and use it for transfers, for example. This can also a decision to make an indication for a hip replacement. So uh, we know polio patients suffer from hip arthrosis now and in the future. In Germany, it's, I told you, 60,000 living. And um, we have seen in our clinic um, about 6,200 polio patients 5% of them had been treated in-house, so they are more affected and had been shown decidedly. There are, not uh, there are no systematic studies in polio-associated hip replacement, and I, I think this is the problem. Um, nobody is sure if he is not being um, surgeon by Dr. Fabienne, uh, or some other surgeons in Europe, um, will he get the best result or not? Will that mean that he will rest in a wheelchair for the rest of his life? Or will he be proper for uh, uh, using his sticks and going on the chair and, and uh, uh, going to, to the market and something like this? So it's a problem because many of our colleagues uh, uh, doesn't know what is polio, what is post-polio problem. Polio is over and many of our um, colleagues don't see polio anymore. And uh, to decide now, um, is it necessary or what's the best way to make a hip replacement, this is the problem. And for this problem, we are standing here and give them information. Um, I think our results 
shows us that hip replacement in polio sequelas are successful. Yes, and if you have pain and you have everyday pain, uh, you make the decision and um, you must be sure that you have a doctor who will inform about polio and post-polio syndrome and when you're sure about this, you should be go to this step and make a hip replacement. The status of palsy and the PPS should be known, so some uh, examinations must be done before, not even MRI, special x-rays, but also a measurement of the muscle power by hands, for example. The surgical approaches uh, determined the clinical outcome, maybe. We don't know it, no researches are done. If we um, choose the wrong approach and the muscle was fine in this situation, in this, um, in this front of the hip, for example, and, and we go to this uh, muscle um, tissue, it might be a catastrophe for the polio patient because he has an uh, increasing um, muscle power only in his front and not on his side. We need a special observance also. We needed in Germany a register. And this is my conclusion. I also have written down in, in the abstract. Uh, what we know is that there are no questions in the international register for hip uh, uh, replacement that uh, people are uh, involved in neuromuscular disease. And this must be one item, what we have to found in this formula, that uh, the surgeon knows and must respect that people have polio, had have polio and have a post-polio post syndrome. Thank you very much for your Merci. attention. Merci. Thank you so much, Axel, for this wonderful presentation. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions pour Axel Rutz, s'il vous plaît? Do we have any questions for Axel? Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Good afternoon, Dr. Reitz. Um, I'm here with the European Polio Union. We have our AGM in this room tomorrow. Uh, we have representatives from 15 European countries. Now, I'm from the United Kingdom, and we are not European at the moment. <laughs> but that should not matter, because polio is a medical condition not a political condition. But we've had some wonderful questions, some wonderful talks, some marvelous facts and figures and information. Uh, does this reach you in Koblensk? Is this disseminated across Europe? Um, how, I know we've met you many times and heard you speak and Professor Van Damme and Franz Nollet, etc. But how is this information a lot of it new and quite innovative. How is this disseminated across Europe? That's a good question, David. <laughs> I think this is a performance, this is a platform here, and we are living in the internet time, and um, we have to publish it. Yes, that's right, yes. And um, we are a community, and also the physicians must uh, build a community for this. It's uh, not so easy, I think, to surgeon uh, polio patients, uh, equal or, uh, knee or hip replacement, or spine surgery, or, or uh, shoulders, uh, alloatroplastic. Uh, we must combine this, and I think it's... Uh, the best possibility to do this by the polio association, so we do it in Germany. We have a an, uh, an, uh, medical council, a board, and um, you have to look for some experts in, in every case of medicine because of a multi-professional theme, the post-polio syndrome. Then we will develop also in uh, surgery for uh, replacements of, of hip and, and knee and so. Ok, thank you. Is there, uh, y a-t-il une autre question? Une autre question? Moi, j'avais, j'avais une autre question. I have another question. So, on the isokinetic uh, uh, tests, 
You did that only for knees, but do you also apply this for the gluteus or uh, the hip replacement? Panatic uh, assessment of the knee yes. and not about the hip because you are going to make yes. a, a, a yes, but hip surgery. But but the femoral part of the quadriceps is a, a B-functional, um, yes, and it's also a stabilizer for the for the for the hip. And if you have a fluid, if, if you have involved uh, quadriceps, yes, there's a postpolio syndrome, and you can measure this with biodex, with isokinetics, also with EMG, for example, and often. In, also in my hospital, the ventral approach is used. You, you are cutting the muscle who is just in an action to lose motor neurons. And this is a principle we knew, that if you are cutting in a muscle who is just in time actually be involved in postpolio syndrome, he will become worse. And this is a decision we are not sure. We have, we have no data from this. No data. But um, it's might be the better uh, approach than come from the lateral side, yes, and don't touch um, the, the hip extension on, on the front. And um, if you don't uh, make an approach from the lateral side that uh, glutei are not involved, you can go around. This is a very specific question, yes. You, you, you are sure that uh, this one, you, you told me also, in, in much times, it's the better leg you have to uh, operate. And I ask you what to do if you make a hip or knee replacement. The weight bearing for six weeks or so is not full, fully possible. Yes, to give him crutches. What what do this when he can't use sticks because he has paralyzed arms, for example? Yes, this is for rehabilitation de, question. De rehabilitation. Yes, um, for for an, do you make a prevention for for an uh, um, for bracing before yes. surgery? Yes. yes, this is a is a yes. good answer. That's why <laughs> I I, I'm going to present our department for the next presentation. But yeah. we have uh, in the same department we're working all together. This is and this is why, the way, David. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And that's why uh, our patients are coming largely before, you know, mm -hmm. surgery, because they have every three years an inpatient evaluation for every polio mm -hmm. who are followed by us. And that's why we can, you know, follow each three years, and each year we can see them for, with a consultation, but every three years they stay at the hospital for one week or two weeks for several assessments. I'm going to to talk about this in the next communication. Yeah, we'll and that's why when there is, a, when it's we have planned a surgery. There is a training before. How to use crutch, how to, uh, to reinforce all the, or your, your, the opposite limb and all that stuff, and how you are going to walk and, and all that stuff. And it's very difficult to normal person's of rehabilitation. Course. Of course, yes, yes, yes of course. You have to plan it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so also we learned that it's good that we have uh, some information from the tissue on for the involved muscle before they make the surgical approach. And uh, people will have an outcome from this uh, if you have minimal touch. Um, uh, surgery in this region, they will stand up like our other patients and leave the hospital after five days, for example. Indeed, and there are also progress that come from the fast revalidation, reco fast recovery, so we try to decrease the anesthesia, but also the pressure on the joints. So there are advances in these areas, and we see that our uh, architect patients are walking back very quickly. I had a, it's not a question, it's a comment. I would like to build up on what was said by a colleague from the British uh, Association. I think we've started to talk about that, but Robert is not here, but I'm the secretary of the uh, association, so I can also uh, play the role of a spokesperson. Uh, we were wondering if at our association's level, 
we should not think about cons creating a scientific committee, medical committee at the European level with the doctors of each country for them to cooperate uh, from time to time and think about, uh, reflect on the topic. Uh, of course, you've talked about a uh, medical committee in uh, France. I don't know if you were there, but yes, at least we had Alain Yelik with us. So it's something we started out, but uh, something that we might talk about tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm also from the UK, but I have a question. You, you, you mentioned earlier about um, if you need a hip operation and it's uh, a doctor who knows about polio, then go ahead. But the uh, problem a lot of our members face is finding a doctor who knows about polio. So do you think they're better off waiting to find a doctor who knows about polio or if it's necessary just to go ahead? Because that's a, a big dilemma most people face, finding a doctor who knows about it. I've discussed this with a patient in this morning. Um, David is asking what we should do. We, we are living in the, in, the, in the internet time, yes? For example, in, in Koblenz there is a hotline, seven days, 24 hours, that... Um, some colleagues from mine can, can give answer to any other colleagues who are not sure what to do after accident for a bone injury. Should they make an operation, surgery, an implant or not? And also in these cases, it's possible to make a connection to every uh, region, every town, also in France, in, in uh, Germany, uh, that uh, people get the information they need or they read the paper which, which are uh, presented in, in these cases, in, in these questions, yes. There's no uh, books written about um, this uh, treatment of polio patients. This is the problem and it's not, it, I think it's been educated in Paris but not in Germany, for yes, example. Yes, of course, yes. no, but it's a really tough job because, you know, uh, um, that's not only polio survivors. We are working also on cerebral palsy, we are working also on uh, spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, and all the management of all these patients are inside the same department, inside the same organization with all the network we have. So uh, in my point of view, that's very difficult to work on so different, you know, scientific committees who are working on in, in the European approach on poliomyelitis, okay, I can go. But if I have to go for poliomyelitis, for uh, cerebral palsy, for... And, you know, the way of thinking is about the same. You have to know exactly what is the deficiency. You have to understand what is function. You have to make a common assessment. I think the real point is how to make a homogeneous assessment of all our patients. And if we can, you know, touch this objective, this aim, I think we will be able to discuss of how to organize for specific, you know, uh, population. Maybe uh, poliomyelitis, as usual, are the first who are working on this, you know, topic. And why not? I think that's very, very interesting. But I think we, have, we don't have to stay only inside the poliomyelitis world. We have to go a little bit outside because there's a lot of people who are working on that, on that, on that topic. And I think it's... Well, the, the, the way of building you know, something very, very um, uh, complicated is not um, obviously a, a real good situation for the future. I think, first of all, we have to think of how we assess our patient. It's exactly the, patient we, the question we ask to you, because that's very difficult to, to, um, to make some organizations of, of thinking of how to treat if we are not organized to how we assess. I think that's really the main point for now, for the next three years, if you want to work with us. Thank you. Um, J'ai une question. I have just because there is now some new alternatives to uh, of, for, for the uh, arthritis treatment, which is radio frequency of sensitive nerve, genicular nerve for or the, the knee, or some periarticular nerve of the hip, when you put some electric stimulation, you create uh, the, 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 the pain is going off for several months and you can work on your arthritis joint without any pain. And for us, it's a new approach and that's why I am happy that uh, Shoki is here because it's our, you know, anesthesiologist to make this uh, specific uh, treatment. And 
I think we have to think of how we are going to organize all this treatment because if it, if it works, and I want your opinion about these treatments, uh, I think we need maybe to delay a little bit the implementation of the total hepatoplasty or not, because if we wait too long, I think people are not able to work and to, uh, to benefit from maybe rehabilitation after the surgery or other stuff or after too much, you know, uh, um, uh, shoulder pain, but you can treat shoulder pain with this, the same treatment. Mm. So I don't know if you are aware of this kind of treatment, and maybe Shoki, you can tell us a little bit about this. It's a spinal cord stimulation? Uh, no, sorry? Spinal cord stimulation? No. No, no. no. Peripheral nerve. nerve, radio frequency. Radio frequency that uh, mm. make uh, disappear uh, the pain uh, for uh, uh, months, maybe uh, longer. But uh, it depends uh, in case per case. It's uh, mm -hmm. not very uh, uh, liable uh, to, to all uh, patient, patients. And, uh, and, uh, to, uh, and, it's a, it's a uh, and it does work well on knees and shoulder, but not really on the hip. Uh, maybe uh, we have to choose uh, the very good moment to go f for the operation. Yeah. Uh, I totally so, agree. Yeah. Uh, no, to uh, make uh, uh, so far uh, the intervention or, or not, to, to, have, to choose the very uh, good uh, moment. Let me make some remarks. Um, to, to find the point of no return for the polio patient. Yes, yeah. this, is, this is the marks I have to. Yes, uh, it's not the movement, it's not the range of motion. Yes, you have a dysplasia, and normally you find an ankylosis in, 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 the, um, in this patient, but not at polio patient. And the, when, if, if, he's, if you have a new method against pain, it must be possible that you prolong the time that he yeah. must, must not be a surgeon. But um, I think to find the right point to say this is a That's point exactly of no return question. and the yeah. result of replacement yeah. is much better than to wait on. This, this is uh, the experience the doctor must yeah. have. And there is some people who can't uh, benefit from hip or knee arthroplasty. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really good alternative because at the beginning we make just, you know, a sensitive nerve block with idocaine if the pain is going removing you. After we can practice some uh, radio frequency on the nerve and the people is going uh, at home after just one stimulation, yeah, and without any pain from several months. That's... I think we have to think we, about we, this. We know this from the spinal, um, for, for the spi it's SCS, yes, um, spinal, implantation, for example, yes, for the, with the high energy. For, uh, but um, I don't know this uh, method for, at all. Yeah. For other articulation and That's the, remarkable. the block nerve mm -hmm. can uh, make a, a gain of uh, a win of uh, time and uh, um, uh, to broke uh, the connection of yes. uh, chronic uh, pain. Probatoric. And maybe to prepare the surgery, you know, yeah. because yes. you have to wait for yes, several months. Okay.